Hello, everybody. It's a new week, and you are listening to The Daily Thread. How was your weekend? I feel like we haven't recorded an episode in forever. <sighs> well, um, I actually had a pretty good episode Thursday. I think it was, you know, when you finish with a good episode on Thursday, it kind of like lasts through the weekend because the feedback and the response just goes goes through uh, the whole uh, the whole weekend. We should point out that it's a beautiful day here in um, in New York for a change. Because, you know, we, we've been complaining for the longest time about how every day is gray <clears throat> and cloudy. It looks like an impending, um, you know, tornado or snowstorm or something. Uh, but uh, Baruch Hashem, we got beautiful blue sky over uh, downtown Amazing. Cedarhurst, New York. That's great. By the way, I just want to mention um, a shirt that I... I f- found and started wearing mm-hmm. this the shirt i'm wearing right now it's from a company called collars and co right it's actually a, it's owned by a jewish guy he was on shark tank he did a deal with mark cuban and peter jones they What's invested it? over a million dollars but th- these basically these shirts are the rest of the shirt is ultimately like a t-shirt like it looks like a regular dress white shirt and mm-hmm. it's got the buttons and the hard collar but the rest of the shirt is like like a t-shirt and it's i wore it this shabbos to shul and it yeah. is the most comfortable <laughs> It is the most comfortable shirt I've ever worn in my entire life. You know how like sometimes Mincha time Shabbos, you're like, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I was really just chilling. I was comfortable. Um, so yeah, I got to get you a couple of those shirts. Yes. I think uh, you'll really I, enjoy uh, I'd like to, they come in different colors or they're all white? Yeah, no, they come in, they come in all different colors. They have sweaters. So they also just started making full, like this one is a, uh, this is a polo one. Uh, it's short sleeve. It's got like I don't know one two. Has got like four buttons, but they have full button down now also with the same with the same stretch. Um, so I look forward to getting those as well. And but what do you do? Uh, what do you do in the summer when you don't want to wear a sweater or, over it? And it's warm outside. What do you do? You don't have to wear a sweater. Why would you have to wear a sweater? You don't have to wear a sweater. You just wear a, a polo shirt with a collar. Well, every polo shirt has a collar. Just not all collars are created equal. This collar is just a good collar. It's like a dress you know? shirt collar. It's like a dress shirt collar, like this. It's like a, it's like a, yeah, it's like a dress shirt collar, but without that potato starch feeling on the no, rest of the a, shirt. Oh, it's a, great thing, especially for people that always wear jackets. You know, uh, yeshiva yeah. guys always wear jackets. Uh, you know, people in, in for example, uh, Muncie and Borough Park, Williamsburg, by the uh, Hasidic Shalom there. Uh, yeah. it could be, it could be 110 degrees outside, oh, and they wear yeah. By the way, jackets. It, it's it's no surprise, but I wear a kapata on Shabbos like the rest of my brothers. For kapata wearers or Bekisha wearers, this is like, oh my gosh, this is found gold because you go wear it on Shabbos and it's it's like, it looks like you're wearing, you can you wear, the, the collar is so good that you can wear a tie with it. It's like, by the way, no, people are wondering, like this is, this is not a paid ad. I just really am wearing a most amazing shirt ever. I see. Uh, but I'll, sound I'll like tell you you're, something. You sound like you're in love, actually. It's it's like you know when you find the right shirt when you find the comfortable shirt there's yeah. nothing better mm-hmm. nothing better it's like it's like finding your shidduch. Um so I want to mention this this video I saw over the weekend um, I think I saw it on either Friday or Monday Shabbos so there's a YouTuber his name is Drew Binsky uh, he makes travel videos he travels around the world goes to different communities so he came to I think it was either Williamsburg or Bar Park. And he made a video about the about the Hasidim in Brooklyn. This mm-hmm. is not like a new, this is not like a new thing. You know, uh, Peter Santanello did a really good job of doing it with Shlomi Zayitz. But Drew Binsky came to uh, came to Brooklyn. He has three point six million YouTube subscribers, wow. and um, this guy has been to North Korea. He's been to South Sudan, and he came to Bar Park. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll tell you for for those who haven't watched it, but I'll just give my review. Um, big mistake I think he made. Oh uh, yeah, a big mistake that I believe he made is that the person who was showing him around, you won't believe this. The person that was showing him around was Abby Stein. Mm-hmm. Now Abby mm-hmm. Stein is notably mm-hmm. a transgender Hasidic, mm-hmm. now identifies as woman. Um, mm-hmm. That's who. That's who he decided. <coughs> that's who he picked to show him around the community. Someone who is yeah. no longer part of the community. Someone who I guess is estranged, you know, from their family. That's who he picked to show him around. So obviously his experience wasn't too great. It was a little bit polarizing. 
Um, he did. He, he went to the good food places, but he's he's getting a glimpse of the community through Abby Stein's uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. So I, at the end of the video, however, Shlemy Zions, he spent Shabbos with Shlemy Zions, and he got that perspective. I think that was sort of to cover to save face. You know, maybe people saw what was going on, so they said, "Oh, go go to go meet with Shlemy Zions also." Mm -hmm. But like this guy Drubinsky is a Jewish guy. He put on tefillin. It was like you know, it was like a coming home tour. But it was just so ridiculous. Like, you're not. Why would you go into a community to cover a community to show what it's like with someone who literally is no longer part of that community? You know, that's just evidence of the fact that from the outside, <clears throat> even though we know the the differences uh, between the different types of communities that uh, exist within orthodoxy from the outside world, it's everybody's just exactly the same it doesn't make a difference to them you could spend all day till you're blue in the face explaining the, the the nuances and the differences and it doesn't mean anything to an outsider it just it struck me as so strange like why like why do that um and of course he, he, he ended off the video he, oh, i think he knows better why would now, you go to the why would I, you go to a community like bar park with someone who is no longer part of the community I think he probably knows now. I don't think he knew before. I don't think that was, I don't know him. I haven't seen it, but I could imagine that he realizes now it was a, a miscalculation, but probably I, was not aware of that. I, I really wonder. I really wonder. Anyway, this video has, <coughs> has, has, this video has millions of views. And um, to be honest, he said certain things in the video, like, you know, um, even though the community does, is not good to women and it's not good to LGBTQ, like, Things like that. What do you mean they're not good to women? What does that mean they're All not right. good to women? So listen. So the guy, the the person showing him around, Stein, has an agenda, and uh, I know he was promoting uh, that agenda, whatever it is. The only good thing that came out in the video about the Jewish community was they make good food. Like that was like the only thing that millions of view viewers are going to be able to see is that they make good food. Well, that's a, that's important. Though. We should discuss that sometime, either today or sometime this week, because I think we'll have plenty. Yeah, well, plenty of opportunity to discuss the good yeah, food. Because Pesach, Pesach is a very food centric uh, yantif. I mean, it's about you see us mitzrayim, zechel see us mitzrayim, you know. But it's also uh, it's a very very it's neck and neck with the food that people are going to eat on yantif. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I just got an alert here. For Haskell Bennett tw uh, tweeted on Twitter, good news, mm -hmm. emergency passport appointments are reinstated at the U.S. Embassy in Israel. Mm. Uh, so a big thank you to <laughs> Chaim Bechesed, a big thank you to Amudim, Tzvi a big thank you to the yeah, Aguda for their involvement in, in making sure that people are going to be able to get back into town for Yontif. Just like that. All the well, good stuff happens once we're live. I spoke to somebody yesterday who has been waiting months for an emergency passport appointment and had no idea about either Chaim Bechesed or uh, or Tzvi Glock, maybe uh, maybe through this podcast and uh, through some other uh, outlets, uh, they'll they'll become aware of it. Yeah, that's well. It's just yeah. it's a strange, I, it's a very unusual, a very complicated, uh, unusual issue. Um, even in good times, they were saying some of the people that wrote us over the weekend were saying yeah. that even under normal circumstances, this, this these changes were all post COVID. Um, yeah. there's a reluctance to let people inside on a government level. Government is still looking for an opportunity to keep people out of their building, uh, to only let people in with masks. It's not like it was uh, a lot yeah. of things, a lot of things that changed when COVID arrived, even though most things are gone and we're pretty much back to normal life, Baruch Hashem, still where it, where it, uh, um, where it's an advantage to government employees or to teachers in public schools or things like that, they still want to fall back on COVID rules. So right. that kind of that kind of slows things down. So just to get to some emails, I guess about this, uh, we got an email from someone that says, "Hi, Larry and Ache, I wanted to add something to your story regarding emergency passports for newborns. I just had my fifth child here in Israel, and it's the first time that I have to wait six months for an appointment to get a passport for my baby. In the past." Pre-COVID, one could get an appointment easily within the first month after giving birth. Since COVID, it has been a major issue getting appointments. I just gave birth February 19th, and we started checking for appointments since that day. There are no appointments before September. As you know, uh, your grandson and our, our nephew... Oh, this is this is, uh, this is Chana Rachel Rosenzweig. Right. Um, our nephew, Nissan Franklin, will have his bar mitzvah this summer, and I was hoping to fly to America for the occasion. However, if I'm unable to get a passport for my baby before then, I will not be able to go. 
This is not an issue of people are waiting until the last minute. This is an issue regarding people be, being able to get an appointment to report a birth abroad uh, within a reasonable amount of time. Like I said, this is really a recent issue for my first four children. Here in Israel, we do not have to wait more than one month to get this appointment. If this, is, if this issue was addressed first, there wouldn't be such a scramble to get emergency passports. I totally hear that. And thank you for that. Another feedback we got was uh, titled Pesach Cake Rocks. Hi, Nachi. Thank you so much for this amazing podcast. I love coming home from work and listening to it. Regarding the cake situation, I like both of them. But the macaroons are the thing in in the end. They're just like That's a piece true. of sugar. Thanks. That's true. Another we didn't, we didn't, we didn't mention yeah, macar- we didn't discuss we didn't macaroons. macaroons last week, right? Well, we had to leave something yeah. for this week. So That's know, true. I another... Think- another Hi, it says, hi, Mr. Gordons. Oh, that's cute. I love your podcast. It's the highlight of my day. Keep them coming. It's a light. Brachos and Hatzlacha. Our family is rainbow cake. Ah. I had some rainbow, rainbow cake. cake. I had some rainbow cake uh, on Shabbos uh, at, your, at, at Malky and Jeremy's house. She, uh, I guess, is buying, I don't know, uh, Pesach cakes already. So, But I just caught my eye because it's so, so vibrantly colorful. I mean, there must be a heck of a lot of food coloring in there. It's just sta- it's like you know it's like standing out of light waiting for it to turn green when, when it's red. Yeah, it's amazing how so, it draws uh, your attention. Yeah, something but. that we all something all something that we all were able to see when we turned on our phone Monday Shabbos is that Donald Trump said that he plans and he expects to be arrested on Tuesday. Um, this is something that I would say has never happened before. Definitely right. in modern American history, right. where a former president, one that's running for a reelection. Has is going to be arrested uh, for for some misdemeanors. You know, it seems like they're trying to just dr- uh, drum up some charges to to arrest him. Um, and Elon Musk took to Twitter and he tweeted that if Donald Trump gets arrested, he's going to win the election by a landslide. Right. Uh, right. So his perspective is yeah. So I'd love to hear so, hear your take. The Dem- so the Democratic calculation is that uh, Trump is going to win in the short term, but he's going to lose in the long term. That uh, if he gets arrested tomorrow, and f- the information that I've been able to call so far is that the Manhattan District Attorney hasn't made a definite decision yet uh, to arrest him uh, because they are, but first of all, you're having justice being weaponized as a political weapon, as a political tool. Which, which, is never, which has never happened before. Which it, has it, never it, happened before. It's unconscionable. It's becoming clearer to the average person, and that's how they're going to decide what to do. How much of the corruption that's taking place in the justice, uh, in the justice uh, agencies, is uh, uh, being done to uh, um, uh, accomplish a uh, political gain? And when they feel that it's trickling down, where the man on the street is getting that sense, then they're going to stop. Uh, so, because it's going to it's going to turn a, a lot of elections against them. But right now, sitting here in uh, March, uh, 2023, uh, with an election not scheduled uh, for president until November, uh, 2024, which is a uh, more than a year and a half away, they think that uh, if they arrest him, they put him on put handcuffs on him. It's not an easy thing, you know. I'll tell you, uh, it's even, it's very very complicated. Even if they want to arrest him, but let's say they arrest him, they put handcuffs on him, they take a mugshot, they march him into a police station like they do anybody that's arrested that they want to uh, humiliate. Um, yeah. The the Democrat calculation is that in the in the short term it'll it'll be to Trump's advantage, but over the long term people are gonna, people are going to say. You know, six months and a year from now, once the primaries start, do we really want to vote for a guy that has a criminal record, that was indicted, that has these problems? But uh, uh, that's a calculation uh, that they're taking. Now, how they're actually going to arrest him, because don't forget, a former president has Secret Service constantly uh, protecting him uh, around the clock. Mm-hmm. So the Secret Service, it has to be worked with the New York uh, Police Department. So it's not so push it to arrest a, uh, a prior president and put him through a conventional type of, uh, you know, uh, arrest with handcuffs and a perp walk and into a police station, take fingerprints, take a mugshot. You can't do that. It's a president. He has to have the protections of the Secret Service. So that also right. is, is, is complicated. But I think, I think uh, the Democrats know that um, they have nobody down the road of, that has any um, really real talent. Uh, Biden is fading fast and uh, also fading fast politically and uh, I guess uh, literally. Uh, it's also having trouble with um, 
being exposed as being on the take uh, with his family and probably him accepting Chinese money. So he's compromised and the, and then, uh, on that level. And Democrats have no no talent that could beat a Donald Trump or even a uh, Ron DeSantis or uh, even a Nikki Haley uh, down the road. They don't have that kind of talent that the Republicans well, have. I- it's like like you mentioned, um, what this does is sort of it, it politicizes justice. So what what we're likely going to see, which is unfortunate that it's going down this path, is that after Joe Biden's presidency, he might get arrested and Hunter Biden's going to get arrested because they're going to look at the things that were committed by uh, by his by his government. Um, accepting money from China, the wrongdoings with Ukraine, the laptop and they're going to say, hey, listen, you wanted to arrest Donald Trump for some small charges. We're not going to look away. You know, and, and to, to go a step further, you know, they had mentioned that Donald Trump's going to be arrested and he's going to it's going to be a public shame, meaning he's going to be taken out in handcuffs and walked into a police station. Well, let me tell you something. Celebrities, even celebrities are given many times the ability to show up at the police station, not get handcuffed, come quietly. Mm-hmm. They're not going to offer this that that to the former president you, well, you said it perfectly uh, you, how you know but uh, but uh, democrats uh, when they want to arrest somebody they show up with a SWAT team at their house at 6 a.m they point guns at their family republicans you see when uh, merrick garland uh, is the uh, is the attorney general of the united states and he has to uh, on a federal level, he has to authorize these things. In New York City, you have, you know, Governor Huckle, and you have the uh, police commissioner. They're all Democratic uh, appointees. Uh, you have yeah. Attorney General in New York, Letitia James. They have one uh, agenda item: is to stop Trump uh, uh, at all costs. When Bill, when Trump was president, and Bill Barr was Attorney General, and Trump wanted Barr to do certain things, Barr said, "No, I can't do that. That's not right. That's not legal. That's not proper." And Mike Pence was the same way. No, I'm not gonna. You want me to do X, Y, and Z? I can't do X, Y, and Z. I have to consult my my attorneys. And you know what? Things work exactly the same way in Israel. The right is not as cruel uh, and doesn't stoop as low as the left does. Yeah, it's, it's you know, right now, I guess we, we're going to see what happens tomorrow obviously. I my 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 prediction, my prediction is that they're not going to arrest him. I think that it's a really bad mistake by like in, in a bipartisan way. Even if you're a democrat and all your officials are democrats, the amount of the amount of uh chaos it's going to cause in the streets of New York and in the streets like everywhere Everywhere, it's just going to cause unnecessary friction. I don't think there is enough to really convict him on, more than there was for Hillary Clinton, more than there was for Joe Biden, more than there probably was for any politician that's out there. This is a, a political move, yeah, and but it's not worth it. When, when, when someone like Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden misuses money or takes money illegally— uh, when you have a Democrat controlling the Department of Justice or the uh, District Attorney's Office in New York, um, that's, that's they're not your going, perspective. They're, they're, not go, they're not going to charge them. When you have a Republican there, they don't want to charge them either. They want to go easy. They want to move on. Even even uh, uh, you know Joe Biden, until the Republicans won the majority in the House and they have a slight majority, Biden was just passing executive order after executive order. He asked the Republicans object. I'm going to just ram it down your throat. I'm just going to do what I got to do because I have the majority. Now, Kevin McCarthy is not saying that we have the majority, so we're going to do what we want to do. No. Kevin McCarthy, I saw on the news yesterday, is saying, I want to sit down with the president. I want to talk. I want to negotiate. I want to reach a compromise. That's uh, that's the Republicans. Yeah. Well, again, that's that's your opinion. That's your perspective. And yes. uh, I think yeah, many people of course. would agree. Whatever I'm saying is my, p- my perspective, my opinion. Yes. Yeah. I think many people would agree with you. But listen, we'll see what happens tomorrow. If if you're if you're in for hawk and fireworks, then tomorrow might be exciting or it might be a big letdown. But anyways, I, I would suggest not driving tomorrow anywhere near the city. That's I don't think, something uh, that. Uh, 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 first of all, Republicans don't. Don't demonstrate Abba, Abba, Democrat. Abba. The way they Democrats don't demonstrate. Do. Are you not kidding the way Dem- me? Do you not, remember? Not the way. Do you Democrats, remember January sixth? Do you remember uh, January sixth? Uh, you know, you're you're buying into the the media story of January sixth was a no, big no, no, demonstration. No, 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 no. 
There was a. I don't, I don't want to get into. Um, I don't want to get involved in that. I don't want to have any visits from the Justice Department. Uh, you know, saying that I endorsed January sixth. Of course, I condemn January sixth, and any but kind you, of, I'm just any kind of any kind of damage or violence. But the, it, 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 it's always the Democrats that uh, um, uh, characterized it as an insur as an insurrection. You know, it wasn't an insurrection. And you know what? Over a thousand people were arrested. And not one was charged with insurrection. They were charged. You know what they were charged with, Nachi? They were charged with disorderly conduct, with trespassing. trespassing. That's, that's not an insurrection. Why wasn't insurrection is a crime? Why wasn't any one of a thousand people that were arrested charged with insurrection? That's no, all. I hear you. I I, I hear you. Um, and I hear what you're saying. But I'm just I'm just saying that you you will. I, I can bet your bottom dollar that if Donald Trump is arrested tomorrow. New York City streets will be full of people, and they're not. Gonna, they might not be looting, nope, right? They it, might not be nope, burning things down. If there, if there's protests, it'll be calm. It'll be peaceful. Uh, uh, they have a right to to protest. Everyone, everyone in America has a right to protest. That's what makes America great. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, but when the, when, Demo is, when the Democrats when the Democrat followers go to the streets, you talk, you're talking about violence and destruction, and people die, and people get seriously ill, seriously hurt. And places get burnt down. That's a big difference. All I'm saying is that this is like a traffic alert. Traffic. If Donald Trump is arrested tomorrow, don't drive anywhere near the city. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Our next story is uh, out of Huara. Once again, there's a shooting in Huara. And one of the victims of this shooting was David Stern, a 44-year-old self-defense instructor from the U.S. And he was shot while driving to a, a Torah lecture in Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. um, David is a dual American and Israeli citizen. Um, and they live in Givat Ronen. It's a neighborhood in the town of Itamar, north of Hawara. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, David David got shot in the head. The bullet grazed his skull, and it was deflected into his arm. Mm -hmm. um, he was evacuated to the Belton Medical Center in Petach Tikva in serious condition. The hospital official said Stern is now listed in moderate to serious condition, adding that he is not in in threatening in in life threatening danger. Um, I had heard that this David Stern is a, he had he had lived in Farakway at some point. Um, mm -hmm. Also, he lived in Los Angeles. Um, mm -hmm. He he is a former member of the U.S. Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. uh, he he later immigrated to Israel and volunteered for a civilian defense group, securing Israeli towns in Judea and Samaria. During the Second Intifada, Stern and his family were en route to Yerushalayim at the time of the attack where Stern was planning to attend a Torah speech. Okay, I, I, I saw a tweet that um, it was confirmed that he's an American citizen. <laughs> Zahu. Uh, I hate when they do that. Uh, uh, we have confirmed that David Stern is an American citizen. All right, like, so this, you know what like happens. It, this is what happens now. Yeah. So if, if an Israeli gets uh, gets shot uh, or wounded or even killed, God forbid, by a... Uh, by a Palestinian terrorist, there's absolutely absolute silence by representatives and officials in the United States. If he happens to be a dual American and Israeli citizen, there's absolute silence uh, uh, from officials uh, in the State Department and the United States. So what's the difference? So you're here for five seconds that he has dual citizenship. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. What does that mean? What does that mean? Doesn't mean anything. What? What? So, so what if he's an American citizen? So that, so they're attacking Americans. The the yeah. uh, the idea of announcing that. The idea of publicizing that is that the United States should take some kind of stand and help in cracking down on terrorism, which the Palestinian Authority refuses to do. Uh, but they're not—they're not going. They're giving hundreds of millions of dollars to the Palestinian Authority that uh, that this guy who did the shooting yesterday happened to have been killed uh, by the IDF who tracked him down after the shooting. But if they yeah. survive, his family, his surviving family, is going to be getting uh, payment every single month. For him having the uh, great, uh, the great uh, courage, according to them, of uh, shooting a Jew. So yeah, that, that and you get a reward. You get a reward. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Has uh, once again has Joe Biden said anything? No, he's not going to say anything. I don't even know if he knows about it. You it's know, an American citizen. It's American citizen. That's a. That's a. That's, a, uh, that's the, that, my whole that, point. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That that's just announced. I don't know. That's just a way of getting a little bit of additional information. I'm listening to the news uh, on Fox and a couple of other stations and monitoring the websites, the news websites since uh, five thirty this morning. Uh, except for the Israeli websites, I haven't seen a word. True. Also, yeah. You know what? 
truth is, it was even hard for me to find an article on the story. I went to, uh, I went to, I went to Archeva. There's nothing on. It's, there's really nothing anywhere. Well, can I tell you the, the, the if you look at Archeva now? Uh, remember about three weeks ago, there was a Palestinian with a shot a gun in the middle of Dizengoff Street in Tel Aviv, and injured yeah. uh, three people. Well, one of them died this morning of his injuries. Okay, or Ashkar, he's a victim of a Tel Aviv terrorist attack. He succumbed to his wounds. He was seriously wounded in that attack. But it was three weeks ago. It was for, been forgotten since three since those three weeks ago. The uh, Paley brothers were run down and killed. The Yaniv brothers were shot and killed in Huwara. Mr. Stern and his, uh, was shot yesterday. Who even remembers uh, Or Ashkar, who was dressed up in a suit with his two friends going to a wedding, and he's uh, he's now dead. Uh, because he happened to be uh, happened to be a Jew living in Israel, you know, uh, he's not an American citizen. Do you hear anything? Do you hear any outrage? Do you hear any protests? You know. Well, what's Bibi going to do about it? I don't know. <laughs> I saw uh, 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 there's, a, there's a movie. Uh, uh, there's a movie on Chai Flicks. I don't know if you know. It's an Israeli. Uh, it's an Israeli site that has these interesting documentaries about a guy that chronicles all the terrorist attacks, the bus bombings that happened over the years since the early 2000s uh, in Jerusalem. And he, he gives a quiz to his people that take his tour. One of the things says, okay, if there is a bus bombing, if eight are killed, can you go out and have dinner afterwards? The answer is yes. If 12 are killed, well, maybe you'll cancel dinner. You know, it's, it's everything is how you integrate it into your reality. And, uh, that's where the problem lies when it comes to Arabs uh, and Israelis and uh, innocent people uh, being uh, shot at uh, in their cars or on the streets uh, of Israel. Well, that's our episode for today of the Daily Thread. One second, um, I want to I want to bring one thing. I want to bring one thing up. You got to give me a signal when you want to end. You know, that that's my signal. What's up? No, I want to talk about uh, Simcha Eichenstein's. Um, announcement, uh, New York State Assemblyman Simcha Eichenstein about being overcharged for uh, car washes before uh, before Pesach. If you want to wait till tomorrow. I mean, everybody has to wash their car before Pesach, right? That's one of the... It's true. Uh, it's part of the yantif, right? It's part of the way you, you, you buy shmur matzah and you maybe get a new suit, maybe get a new, what's it called? Collars and company? Co collars and yeah. co. Maybe, maybe get a new collar, maybe get a tie, maybe you don't wear a tie, but one thing you got to do is wash your car, okay? And Simcha Eichestein, who's a, an old friend of mine and now is, uh, took Dove Seiken's place in the New York State Assembly a few years ago. He's now a New York State Assemblyman. And he announced last week or uh, Thursday or Friday of last week that we should be on the lookout for car washes that charge Jews more money for Pesach cleaning than they do all year round. And what are you going to do about it if you discover it? You know what you're going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing, exactly, okay? So as long as we got that uh, added away. You know, uh, of course you're going to have your car clean before Pesach. You have to have your car clean before Pesach, right? I kinda, honestly, I might do it myself. Especially if you have, uh, some people have breakfast and lunch in their car every single day. Some, some, people, yeah. think, some people think the passenger side seat uh, next to the driver's seat is really supposed to double as a table where you can put a sandwich down or a slice of pizza Listen, down. Listen, if you travel, if you travel during dinner time, when are you supposed to eat? When you travel during breakfast? First of all, <laughs> I, if you show me a Jew, you show me a Jew, I'll show you someone who eats uh, at least one meal a day in their car. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you mean, that's that's well, for starters. You know, first of all, you first of all, you're in your car, you get a little privacy, which is which yeah. is important, okay? Uh, and if you make a short stop, the, the food could end up on the floor. Okay, it's happened. Uh, it's happened to everyone. Okay, you no, know, that's why to everyone. Uh, that's why you have to clean your car. And I can't. The thing about the car wash before Pesach that an exterior car wash is not going to do it. You have to have a, a good car wash vacuum, deeply vacuumed inside and in the trunk, and um, it, it could cost. I don't know. Some places charge sixty, seventy dollars for a car wash, for, especially you know for a Honda Odyssey. Especially for a Honda Odyssey. You know, Honda Odyssey, um, where you have a lot of kids eating eating candy and and pizza and sandwiches all all, all year. You know, yeah. My, well, <laughs> my father my father used to be reluctant to um to to get his car washed because he he used to say that whenever he washes his car, it rains the next day. So he didn't want to <laughs> have rainy days. So and besides, if you if it rains really hard, you get like a free car wash, right? 
Yeah. So so totally. why, why should you go to a car wash on the next day that it rains? Anyway, that's something to be on the lookout for. And I want to you do sound like, you sound like Jerry Seinfeld. It sounds like you're about to do a stand up okay. comedy bit. No, I'm not doing any stand up comedy. This is not funny. This is a serious matter. Anyway, serious I want to Serious matter. Say, so if someone if someone sees a car wash that's charging too much money, they should They should report call, it to um Report it to, uh, I don't know, maybe you should go into one of the stores here on Central Avenue <laughs> and just report it to somebody because no one's going to do, any, no do anything about it anyway. Maybe, maybe call 311. Don't call 911. Do not call. <laughs> if you're overcharged for a car wash. But one more thing I want to say, okay, before you finish, okay? I, I know you're running late and you have to go to work. Um, oh, you are at work. Um, this is This is work. <laughs> Uh, Can we get the it, drums? Ba -dum -bum. Oh, oh I, I just wanted to say. Listen, I, th uh, I think Abba's coffee just kicked in. No, I, I, I did have two coffees today, actually. Uh, I, uh, I just want to say one more thing. Tonight is my mother's yard site, tonight and tomorrow. Oh, very nice. And my mother's sixth yard site. And um, you have, listen over here, has a, a, a child, a young lady uh, named for my mother, Sir Rosa. And you have a, 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 a young lady also. Name for my mother, Rosie, uh, and there are others uh, scattered around the the family. Baruch Hashem, it's uh, it's six years, and um, and I just wanted to uh, to point that out. The Shem should have the Leah, Sar Rosa, Amen. Bas Aaron, and uh, we'll be observing the earth side tonight. Uh, davening for the Yomid, and have uh, maybe I'll bring some ticket in tomorrow, and we'll talk more about her tomorrow. Absolutely, thank you for tuning into the Daily Thread. Uh, we hope to see you tomorrow. Please make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Too many of you are listening and not subscribed. Guys, it's free. Just hit that subscribe button. Do us a favor. And of course, you can always send us an email with your feedback at thedailythread at meaningfulminute.org. And make sure to sign up to our WhatsApp status. Hit the link in the description or the show notes. Have an amazing day.